might have taken you five or six hours to produce could be done in 10 to 15 minutes. Hey friends, welcome back to the Build with BBB podcast. I'm Casey Farmer, your host here with Gunner Hood. Today we're talking about all things artificial intelligence. We hear a lot from our accredited businesses that this is something they need resources for, so we brought in an expert. Gunner, welcome to the podcast. Casey, thanks so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, so let's start off, Gunner, with tell, tell our listeners what you do and how you kind of led into learning all things AI. Sure. So my day job is digital marketing. We help business-to-business companies primarily, a few business-to-consumer companies, uh, understand how to get their business online and be found. You know, there's nothing more frustrating for you and me as consumers to search for something and not be able to find it. And oftentimes the, the owner of those companies feels the same way, going, people can't find me. How can I change that? So that's usually what we do. But I've also subscribed to the philosophy when it comes to technology, which I love, is that those who learn new technology the fastest will succeed more than those who learn old technology the best. And so AI fits perfectly into that category because while it's not technically brand new, the democratization of it being available to you and me is much more new than what we were used to before. And we see that as a competitive advantage for the companies that want to embrace it. So happy to talk more in detail about those things. So for a lot of businesses who might be tuning in, listening to this on on their drive, what is AI? Let's start there. Yeah. So the easiest way to think of AI is in terms of what you may already know it for. If you have a smartphone, and if I say the word, I'm sorry if it triggers a phone, but maybe it has Siri or Alexa or things like that. That has AI in the backbone, but it was at the machine level at the corporate enterprise level, and it required a lot of resources to execute on that. Today, we're seeing AI being brought down to the individual level through tools like ChatGPT, and basically it's like giving computer programs the ability to think and learn from experience the way that humans do, but do it in a way that is more task-oriented in some respects, than you know what we've done so the, you know just like we've got apps and stuff on our phone when you've used those apps in the past they've been very task specific mm-hmm. what we're seeing with ai now is that not only does task but there's ai bots that will m- meld together several tasks so that it acts almost like a personal assistant doing things for you um, and we'll talk in more detail about what some of those tasks are that could be much more meaningful for your your audience Yeah, so what I'm hearing is there might be an opportunity, especially for businesses who are on the smaller side. They've got one person doing a hundred different things. Maybe they can lean into AI a little bit to figure out how to streamline some of those processes. That's exactly correct. Yeah. So let's start with what businesses... AI, AI is a is kind of a vast ocean. Some people refer to it as the wild, wild west right now. I, what I see more is that there's a lot of tools being developed quickly, and so there's a lot to learn. Um, what are some first things that you recommend to business owners who say, I want to use AI, but I don't know where to start? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of different opportunities, and one way to think about it is, what's a problem that I'm trying to solve as an individual? Um, let's use an example of maybe as a business owner, I need to hire somebody, but I've never written a job description before, or maybe it's been so long that I, it's, that's the thing that's holding me back. It's like, I want to get this person, but I just don't have the time because it's going to take me hours to do this. Well, that's one place where something like chat GPT can come in handy and you can say, I need to hire a X, Y, Z, build out a job description. And its first response is not going to be perfect, but it's a brainstorming exercise that can save a lot of time because if it gets 95% of the way there for you, you just have to help it get the other 5%. And what might have taken you five or six hours to produce could be done in 10 to 15 minutes. And that's where some of the time savings really comes in. And so if that's the first problem that you're solving, then you start to get ideas going, oh, that was actually not very hard. That wasn't scary. What else can I solve for with this tool? And I think that you hit on it, that AI isn't perfect yet. 
And so there, there does need to be some part on the user to kind of go through that information and make sure that it is representative of your company, of your tone. And you know, this is a digital marketer, how you're presenting this information online and checking through. Do you have recommendations for that? Yeah, so think the, the name of it itself being chat GPT implies that it's meant to be conversational in interacting. It's not just ask GPT. That's what Google is kind of for. And in fact, if you need another a- analogy for how AI works, think of Google as a search engine the way that you may have used the library in the past. You would go to the library ask the librarian for recommendations on a particular topic, they would look it up, they'd point you to an aisle, and you'd sift through a bunch of books. Well, that's kind of like the responses you get from Google, and there's multiple responses, but you have to do the research. ChatGPT, by comparison, is more like that librarian has read every book in the library and has automatic recall for those topics, and you just ask the question, they say, oh, here's the answer, and if you need references, here's the references. Now, when ChatGPT first came out, it was really horrible about giving you references, but it's gotten better over time. So if you say, if you if you have a deep expertise in your topic, but you need help with from ChatGPT to write about it, you're going to be able to identify very quickly where it's not correct. And that sometimes they call that hallucination. And we refer to the process as the human in the loop, which we think is a very valuable piece. You've got knowledge and expertise to help decipher what's accurate, what's not, what tone you want to use, and so forth. And through the question and answer process, you can get there. So maybe your first question is, um, help me write a response to a review about you know a customer gave me on this particular topic. And it comes back, one, you feed it what the review was, and then it, it gives you a response. And you go, nah, that's not exactly right. So now you give it more specific instructions. And what I'll say about that is when you interact with ChatGPT, the more specific you can get, the better answer you'll get. Mm -hmm. An example might be, you know, in in real life, if you ask for directions and you you tell your GPS, hey, I want to get to New York from Oklahoma City, there's a lot of ways it could take you. And it's going to make its own decision about that. But you go oh, I've got relatives in Chicago, so we need your route through Chicago, and I want to stop here to you know, go to an amusement park or something. Now you're getting more specific instructions, and it can give you a much better plan and response. And ChatGPT is very similar like that. So I think you're teeing me up perfect for where do you – what resources can you provide for prompts? I see a lot of that on social media. Use this prompt to get uh, to write your content calendar for the month of April or whatever it is. Where can businesses find resources for really specialized prompts? And like you said, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you can even ask <coughs> ChatGPT for help with prompts, which is interesting. And in fact, one of the <laughs> things we suggest people do is once you've entered in whatever prompt, and people may be going, what's a prompt? It, it's basically the question that you're asking or the instruction set that you're giving chat GPT. And one of the things you can do is at the very end of that, you can ask it a question to say, what other details do I need to provide chat GPT to ensure maximum success? And so when you add that sentence at the end of your prompt, you're now asking the artificial intelligence to come back and say, well, if you ask this, this, and this, you're going to get a better example. Amazing. So you're training each other at the same time. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about ChatGPT. You mentioned some apps, Google, and some different things that kind of lean into AI. What other tools are available? And I think you could probably go on and on and on with things that are using AI now. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you one example of one that I love to use personally. It's called otter.ai. So when I have meetings with clients, my goal is I want to focus in on the conversation, not on taking notes. Hmm. I let my phone record the conversation, and then I upload that into this tool called Otter AI, which then transcribes the entire conversation for me and becomes easily referable. If you participate in Zoom calls, you may see this as read.ai or sybil.ai. There's all these different tools out there that do this, but the beauty of them is they can also provide you with um, meeting summaries and action and identify action items and things like that. But more importantly, they become your collective memory going, what did we agree to on that? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. You can go back and say, this is exactly what was agreed to. 
So that's an easy tool, and there's tons of them out there. Um, another tool that I love to use is a Chrome extension that uh, helps me evaluate YouTube videos. So I'll give you an example. I was doing some travel planning recently. We were looking at taking a cruise. And I said, you know, okay, so here's kind of where we want to go and everything else. But let me find out what people had to say about this cruise ship and this cruise line. But there's tons of videos out there. So I just went and select the video. I hit the button on this summarizer. It grabs the information and it creates a 15 bullet point summary for me on that video. And I can look and they go, do I want to watch, do I want to spend 20 minutes watching this video or not? Or maybe it's an hour video. And I did that for like 10 different videos in the matter of three minutes. And I had a lot of information. I could figure out what part of the video I actually wanted to look at. And that saved me a tremendous amount of time. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So now let's talk about specifics. I'm thinking more, if you can provide an example, I'm a business owner who needs help with streamlining my operating procedures for operations. Is there an AI tool for that? Or how can businesses lean into AI tools that already exist to help streamline some of their operations? So I think the answer is both. You're going to find that there's a lot of companies that are constantly evolving their products to incorporate AI. Look at Microsoft 365 as an example. It now has a version that has something called Copilot, which is AI. So if you hated, if you got stuck programming spreadsheets, now with Copilot, you can just tell it in plain English, what do I, this is what I want it to do, and it'll help you execute that you know, in a spreadsheet format for you. Um, that's one example. And so that's an easy way for, for business owners who are already familiar with Microsoft products to say, I can pay a little bit more and get a lot more out of them. Mm. Microsoft Edge also has Copilot built into their Bing uh, software, and that's a free version out there. But think of other things that you use on a daily basis and how you start seeing AI show up in them. The kicker is, you know, as AI evolves, and it's evolving very rapidly, many of the software sets that are out there may not evolve as quickly with AI because mm -hmm. they get stuck on a particular version. They had to do a lot of programming to get there. So if you can be more fluid and learn how to use something like the learning language model like ChatGPT, you're going to have an advantage over being overly reliant on a specific tool out there. Now, something like Otter AI that I just mentioned, I'm okay with ChatGPT evolving a few versions. It will get better over time. It's good enough for me right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that's one of the things going, is this thing good enough for me to pay $10, $15, $20 dollars for to get this task done versus having to hire somebody with a lot of skill sets and pay them a lot of money to do it? Oftentimes it is. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, and I talk, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, that sometimes when a new uh, service or new product launches, it can be a little scary because there's a lot of newness surrounding it. You're not sure all the things that it can do. You're not sure how you train your team. And I think I've seen some videos and things like there's a lot of common misconceptions about AI. So let's talk about that. Um, specifically in marketing, you, you've worked in digital marketing. Is it going to take over uh, human creativity? Have we lost our ability to do some of the things that we've done in the past? Let's talk about where you see that headed. So some people will replace the A in AI from artificial to augmented. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it as augmented intelligence, then it accentuates some of the things that you bring to the table. We know humans are infinitely creative. We write songs, we you know, take photos, things like that. And yes, we're seeing AI come in and start to do some of these things. But the important part is that there's still the human in the loop element, mm -hmm. meaning that somebody has to oversee and supervise what's going on to get the outcome. I mean, for instance, you need a photograph of something, you can go to iStock Photo or something and say, I need a photo for this application. And you can, I'm sure you do this, you spend a lot of time looking for that right photo. Sure. And it's still not the perfect photo for that scenario. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to ChatGPT and ask it to create a graphic for you. Mm -hmm. And it gives you almost exactly what you want after mm -hmm. a few iterations. Sure. The one thing that it doesn't do well is put words on a graphic. <laughs> How many times yeah. have you seen it misspelled? Too many O's in that word or things like that. I mean, so it's kind of crazy how it does that. But that's today's version. A year from now, it's probably going to be really good. Yeah. 
But the value is you still need a human to interface with it to say, this is what I need. So when we think about AI, it's more about tasks as opposed to people. But the value for employees going forward is, as an employer, you're going to value an employee with AI skills much more than you are somebody without them. With the newness of AI, I think there's a lot of training that small businesses might consider doing for their team to get them ready to start using it in their processes and procedures. Do you have recommendations on how to make that happen? Yeah, and I, I certainly applaud those that are willing to do that and make that investment because I think it's going to give them a great payback. Um, one is identify the people on the team who are really excited about it. Let them be your champions and help you identify sources that are out there. There's tons of resources out there, whether it's that, or you can even use AI to search for what are great training resources out there. The thing is that they may not be customized to your needs. And there's consultants out there too, companies like us that you know will work with others to say, this is you know what you're trying to improve upon, here's some opportunities. And so our company, in fact, you know, you'll have some resources at the end of this podcast. We've got a guide. It's 93 pages. It's a free ebook that walks you through not only what is AI, but what are some of the tools. And it has a, whole, a pretty comprehensive list of tools. But more importantly, it's also got prompts based on the type of information that you're looking for, whether it's economic analysis or it's writing job descriptions or things like that. It's got a whole series of prompts that will help you. I mean, prompt maybe that you want is you want a meal plan for the week that adheres to certain dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. It can help you with that too. So, yeah. um, but, and then on top of that, I mentioned workshops, uh, getting a workshop that's customized maybe to your needs or giving people the right amount of information and not overwhelming them is mm -hmm. going to be another key because you can overwhelm people very quickly and then they go, I don't know what to do with this. But if you create a list of things that you're trying to solve for in your business going, we just never have enough time to get this, this, and this done. That's a great place to look at somebody to go, are there resources that can, you know, we should learn to help us do that. And that's a great starting place because now it's meaningful to you as a business owner and to your employees because they feel like they get more accomplished. Let's go back to prompts because I think that obviously that's going to have a role in your training as well. How do you write a good one? Yeah. So we, we said earlier, being specific is one of those things. And there's various models that are out there that use acronyms to help you remember what to put in it. One of the ones that I have uh, really embraced is says it, uh, the acronym is RACE, R-A-C-E. And it stands for Role, Action, Context, and Execute. So the role is a really great thing because let's say the, the problem that you're trying to solve is um, – a data analysis problem, but you don't have a data analyst on your team. So the role that you're giving ChatGPT is to say, assume that you are a data analytics expert. Review this spreadsheet and analyze it for me and give me your perspective. Now I'm very generic in the first prompt on this because the opportunity is it may see things in that spreadsheet that you haven't seen yourself. From a marketing perspective, we might take an advertising campaign mm -hmm. and roll this up and say, give us your preliminary analysis on what's working. And you can even say, give me visualization. So it will create charts and graphs for you that would have been really complicated to do, you know, working individually with uh, um, Excel or something like that. And so it will do that. So that's one thing is the role. The action is you give it specifics around what you're trying to do. Um, the third is context. You may want to layer in some circumstances. So we talked about reviews earlier. So let's say you are an expert digital marketer. Your client received a negative review, and you want to write a response to be seen on Google that follows best practices for review writing. Here is the context around what happened, and you give it your side, and you give it the customer side of the review. And then the execute is, develop a response for, or actually you can say, give me three responses using best practices so that you have some alternatives to choose from. And now you've given it a ton of data to work with. You're very explicit. It knows what its role is and can respond accordingly. One of the things to think about is how 
here were my instructions to chat. And sometimes maybe it makes sense to just start over. One of the, the developments that's happened in ChatGPT over the last several months is now you can kind of go back up to one of your earlier prompts and start from there instead of starting all the way over going, okay, it was here where it went off the rails. So let's back up to that point and let me change my prompt. Let me add a few words. Let me give it a little more context around what I want and how many things I want as the outcome. So if you say, I need 10 examples of topics that I can talk about, well, maybe what it's missing is we want this article, we want this uh, content to be focused in on trade services like HVAC or plumbers or mm -hmm. things like that. And the challenges that they face in scheduling or the problems that consumers are having, you know, if, if somebody's never bought their services before, how can we help them as a buyer have confidence in buying from us? What are some of those topics? And, and you'll come up with ideas around what are the, the questions that consumers might be asking that we can help address and educate them on before they pick up the phone or call one of these agencies or services. And that can go so much deeper than just your marketing plan because then you can say, how can we change our operations to fit that need? Or how can we change some other services in the community that we offer that aren't you know, this primary thing that we're selling, but customers really want to see us at XYZ place. How can we use the information that ChatGPT has given us to then kind of change the direction of our business? Because I've seen some, some businesses do that very thing where they can't really take a look at their reviews or kind of their online reputation and kind of realize what ChatGPT can, even though we know our business is better than anybody else. But then you say, oh, I've never thought about it that way because ChatGPT opened up this whole new side that, that it's seeing in a, in a pattern that it's seeing online. Absolutely. You know, whether, and so that's a great role that it can do for you is if you have a lot of Google reviews, you can pull those reviews out of Google, put them in a spreadsheet, and then ask ChatGPT to actually analyze that from a sentiment perspective and break it down into a table that says, you know, here are the themes that we're seeing in customer reviews that may help you identify, you know what, we've got a problem on the scheduling side or we've got a problem on the communication side, or that's what people value the most about us. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's the importance of these things so that it gives you some, um, some guidance going forward on how to make adjustments to your business to outperform the competition. Mm -hmm. And think about this, if you can get your, your reviews, couldn't you also download somebody else's reviews and analyze my, my biggest competitor is this person and this is what we're seeing? Why don't we use that as competitive intelligence? Yeah, I love that. And not to say like we're we're trying to down any other business in our community, but the goal, right, is to figure out how we can best serve our customers. And that's really where AI can fill that need, especially for small business owners who are trying to wear 100 different hats and do 100 different things. Well, and so many times the small business owner is the salesperson. So mm -hmm. who's their sales pitch? Who's there to help yeah. them understand how they're doing, you know, what are they doing in the sales process? And this is another example of where chat GPT can come into play. Let, you know, if you follow a particular sales process, you've got a well-defined process. You know, if you're a plumber, you've got processes for plumbing, you ought to have some for sales too. And so if you, those are defined, you can upload those processes into chat GPT. You can then use tools like Otter to record and transcribe your sales interactions with people. You'd be amazed how many people Customers actually now just use their front doorbell cam to record sales interactions with people mm. at the front door. Same thing. But in this case, you're doing it. Then you upload that transcript in there and say, evaluate this sales interaction against the criteria or the process that I've already shared with you and give me, score it. Give me feedback on areas that you know I'm doing well and areas where I need to do better. So now you kind of have a personal sales coach, but it starts with, can you define a process? And if you don't have a sales process, you can then ask it to go, hey, go out. Here's some of the main sales organizations out there. Give me a summary of what their key processes are for sales and see which one aligns with your philosophy and say, that's what I want to use. Let's let's evaluate myself against that process for starters. I think that could also be really beneficial and you may use this as well, but for public speakers yeah. to evaluate how their presentation is going and here's what the information that they're trying to present how and what can AI and that, uh, analyze from that information, the transcript, right? 
And the great thing is it takes all the subjectivity out of it. Mm. If it can evaluate you against known criteria, sure. then it's just... It just has to be able to understand the transcript and, and, you know, match that up against the criteria. I love that. Gunnar, you've got my wheels turning on some things that we can do here. Awesome. Um, what other tips, things that you want to share with our accredited businesses that they might need to know about augmented intelligence or artificial intelligence, as you said? So we, we've talked about chat GPT a lot, but do know that's not the only one out there. Google has one that's now called mm -hmm. Gemini. It used to be called Bard until just recently. Mm -hmm. There's one called Perplexity. There's one called, um, well, we haven't even talked about the, the image generating thing. Yeah, like, Bing AI, we use that. Yeah, Dolly yeah. and mm -hmm. Leonardo and uh, Mid Journey. These are all, you know, things. There's just tons of things out there. And again, our, our guide will give you access to a lot of these different tools that are too numerous to mention here, but <laughs> they can be very task specific. The one thing we didn't talk about was something new too called Custom GPT. Okay. Uh, is that something you're familiar with? No, bring it on. Let's let's talk about it. <laughs> so we're all familiar with apps on our phone, right? Sure. And those apps are very task specific. I want to do this. You know, I, I'm taking a flight on American Airlines. They have an app for that. You know, but it it doesn't work for Southwest. It only works for American. Well, ChatGPT now allows you to create kind of your own personalized apps. That if you have the premium version, which is twenty bucks a month that allows you to create these kind of bundled tasks. It could be around clients, it could be around processes. So let's say you have a monthly process that you go in and you analyze your financials or something. You could then create a custom set of instructions that says this is exactly what you're supposed to do so you don't have to type it in every time. It now knows this is, this is my monthly financial analysis GPT. Oh wow. And then all you do is upload the numbers and it follows the instruction set that you already gave it to Amazing. do that. Yeah. How do you go about creating the instruction set? It, you can actually ask it to help you. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> by prompting that. It has two different ways. One, you can be very explicit or you can ask it to do it. And here's a great tip too. Once you've, once you've gone through an exercise with ChatGPT and it's something that is a repeatable process for mm -hmm. yourself, once you've gone through that whole chat process and you've gotten the outcome that you want, you can then ask ChatGPT to say, summarize the entire thing here into the prompt that I will need to utilize next time in order to do this again and get the same outcomes. Amazing, yeah. And that's the prompt you want to save. Yeah. And that's the prompt you can also put into custom GPT so that you've got the exact instruction set that you need. Wow. So for our listeners today, Gunner does a lot of presentations and workshops in our community. If, if they want to learn more, where can they connect with you? Yep. So a couple different places, and I try to make this as easy as possible. The resources that we talked about that you'll find is you can get a do a quick AI readiness assessment for your business on this. You can download this 93-page uh, uh, chat GPT book or ebook. And we also are planning some upcoming workshops. So if you want to be notified about when those workshops are coming up, you can do all of this. The easy place to go is just gunnerhood.com. It will take you to the right page. My name is spelled G-U-N-N-A-R hood.com. We'll pop that up on the screen Perfect. as well. And we can put that information in the description as well. Absolutely. There's also a link there. If you say, hey, I want to book a 15-minute call with Gunner, just ask some questions, you're welcome to do that there as well. The other places I do a lot of work on LinkedIn. I do a lot of training on LinkedIn too, so you can easily find me there. My name is the only one on it, or you can just go to linkgunner.com and find me on LinkedIn that way. I love it. Gunner, thank you so much for sharing all of your expertise with our community. We so appreciate it. There's so much potential out there. We want to see business owners leverage it and you know make the most of it because it's tough doing business out there. And if there's something that can help you a little bit more, Take advantage, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you for everybody who listened today. Make sure to connect with gunnerhood.com, correct, to connect with Gunner. Also connect with Gunner on LinkedIn. You can follow BBB on all of our social channels at BBB Central OK. And make sure to check the description box for all of the resources that we mentioned today. I think there was far too many for us to go over tools and different things that businesses might want to check out. So make sure to look there. Thank you so much for listening, and we will.